Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration. Collaboration can inspire community and communities create social change. I'm David Peck and this is Face to Face. So my, interv- my interview today was with another uh, TIF uh, film, uh, uh, filmmaker that premiered her film Beneath the Spaceship at TIFF uh, this year, Carolyn Ingerson. And it's, uh, it's a really interesting short that I think demands more than one viewing because on the surface, um, I'm not going to tell you much about the film because I'm going to let her talk about it in the interview, but it's a fascinating interview that we did uh, over Skype. So there may be a few uh, issues for you there uh, as, as a listener, but I really encourage you to stick with it because it's not only is it a fun and an enjoyable interview with Carolyn, she's wonderful and brilliant on a variety of levels, but this this film, this poetic uh, artistic piece, this short that she's created, I think is an important uh, piece from a cultural perspective, and it's 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 going to force you to ask some deeper questions about about love and about relationship, and about boundaries. And so, um, listen up, listen in, and enjoy the interview. Uh, Rabble.ca. You can also get more of my. Um, uh, podcast at davidpecklive.com Carolyn Ingerson uh, on her film Beneath the Spaceship Well, welcome to Face to Face and we are joined by another very special guest here, another filmmaker a Swedish uh, filmmaker, I believe um, joined by Carolyn Ingerson today uh, Thanks for joining us, Carolyn Thank you for having me It's fantastic to be part of this show so it's really looking forward to it. Yeah, really appreciate it that we were able to connect on Skype. It's been a little bit of a, a, a game show connecting, I think, uh, on some level. But but we're, we're we're live now through Skype. The beauty of Skype. Thank thanks so much. Um, so uh, tell me tell me about your film uh, beneath beneath the spaceship. Uh, it premiered uh, with uh, was it a world premiere? Yeah, it was world premiere. So it was quite nerve wracking showing it for the first time. Um, so Beneath the Spaceship tells the story about Julie, who's a 15-year-old girl who's best friend with her neighbor, and much older neighbor, who's a 45-year-old man, and how they hang out underneath their local water tower that looks like a spaceship until the day comes where Julie starts noticing what other people perceive of them and perceive of their relationship and what they think and how that Pissed in the pot. Um, by the way, I've got to say that the Millennium Falcon reference was, without a doubt, my my. I think one of my favorite moments in in the film. I have to say, <laughs> it's just oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. A poor a poor man. <laughs> credit a, to my. <laughs> yes, a poor man's Millennium Falcon. Just, I mean, I la- I laughed out loud. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> So I mean I love I love what's going on in this film. I mean first of all congratulations on the world premiere and and you were actually in TIFF. You were at TIFF. It, this wasn't a long distance thing for you. You were able to come and enjoy part of the festival. Yeah, it was so amazing. I actually went with uh, it was my me and my producer who's also called Carolyn Drab um and we went over for I think almost 7 days and it was an incredible festival. And the shortcuts programmers and all the other shortcut filmmakers, it was just an amazing community feeling that we all come so very far to create something. It was an extraordinary feeling, and I would love to return to TIFF. Well, I hope I hope you can come back here not only as a filmmaker but also maybe just to 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 enjoy it on a whole other level because it's a it is a pretty incredible festival. I mean, I think it's close to three hundred films. It's you know uh, mm. about, about ten days all in, and it's uh, as you say there is a community feel to it. There's a there's a subculture that's working in Toronto during the festival that I think is quite quite remarkable. So Beneath the Spaceship is not a science fiction film at all. It's a, I mean, we're talking no. about, we're, we're, we're talking about a very, 
uh, specific relationship here. A very, uh, I was going to, you know what, Carolyn, I was going to say a very peculiar relationship, but I don't think that's fair. Uh, I really don't think that's a fair way to, to represent this, this, um, this friendship. In one might... way it is. I think in one way it is fair. Um, because it's a peculiar relationship, but he is not aware of it. Or he is probably, but she's just not aware, aware of it because she's known him her entire life. So, so from some certain regard, it's particularly different from others, but from her, it's never been questioned. Right, right. Sorry, I know. Yeah, no. There's there without a doubt. There seems to be uh, uh, an innocence uh, from both of their perspectives. Really, I mean, it's quite wonderful and lovely the the haircutting scene. And I have to say, I mean, maybe peculiar is the right word, but I felt a little uncomfortable at the haircutting scene, you know. And yet, as the mm. film goes on and as we get further into the story, they really do seem to have a pretty pretty simple, lovely relationship uh, until uh, things change just a tad, it seems, when she starts to, you know, um, I guess, what, what is she doing? She's drawing on his leg, I think, at some point. Yeah, she's, it, it was this game when I was a child. I remember that you, like, you follow people's freckles or their birthmark and you do a circle around them and write the number one and then you go to the next one. You draw a line between them, so it becomes a puzzle. So she was just in the film, she was in a way just doing an innocent game, you could say, like she just started drawing the dots because it's very common in Sweden. Oh, okay. But then as it continues up his leg, she enters a territory where it's very, of course, very as a man or as a woman, if you go further up your leg, you become uncomfortable. But she's She's not totally aware of what she's doing wrong. Meanwhile, Paul, the main character, who is much older and wiser, understands the consequences when she yeah, comes closer, so to speak. You know, it, it, it is an interesting question for me. You know, as a parent, I have two young kids and... You know, mm. if, if this was my child, would how would I, how would I, you know, I watch this film, how would I be feeling if this was mm. my daughter with this guy? Do I know this guy? Do I trust this guy? Is there a, an ulterior motive? And I think on some level, you know, near the end of the film, there's uh, one of the young teenagers at the party that they're at. He uh, definitely notices the two of them and they start making these cracks and calling them names and, and so on. And, um, it's interesting to me that that's kind of where we jump first. And I don't know exactly. if we all, I don't, I don't know, Carolyn, I don't know if we all do that, but it is kind of interesting to me that, 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 uh, even these young teenagers, that's where they went. It, I think, I think it's just human behavior in a sense that when we see something that's not really normal, not something that's a bit odd, and especially an older man with a younger girl, then you start questioning it. Um, I think for me, the the scene underneath the spaceship when she draws on his leg is that the first, it's a catapult into what's going to happen. And it's of her being aware of that she's losing him and needs to do anything to get him back, in a sense. And once they're on the pier and he screams out, the, the kids on the beach screams out, pedophile, it's almost like I want you as an audience I would leave it very open to reflection, but from my, at the same time, it's almost like I want you to see your own prejudice. Right. If that's, yeah. And that's probably the easiest way to explain it. But it's been very, it's been extremely interesting screening this film because I thought being from a country, a Sweden, who's very for, forthcoming country when it comes to female rights and feministic movements, that I would get, um, what's the right word? I thought they would get very upset with me for making this film. Right. Um, but it's been almost derived the opposite in the sense of a lot of women have seen this film, recognize, like, recognize themselves in it and have all said, yes, I had that friend, I had that older friend. Either that... So they, a lot of girls can recognize themselves in this. Meanwhile, 
a lot of dads who have just recently, like a lot of guys in the like early 30s who have just got kids, they straight away jump to that this guy is a pedophile. Right. So it's been a very interesting social study for my case, how the reaction had been on the film. So, I mean, on some level to me, this is a, this is a movie about trust. I mean, this is mm. clearly it's mm. a film about relationships and about, you know, boundaries and societal norms and, you know, just normative behavior, I guess you could say. And what, you know, when, you know, what's comfortable maybe in, in Europe and Sweden is definitely maybe not going to be comfortable in Canada or the U.S. or in Mexico mm. or whatever. Um, but for me, it's about trust because there is this, clearly there is this beautiful, um, I love the scene uh, with the soccer net, by the way. I mean, it's just, you know, in the oh. car. I'm glad. Yeah, and I mean, it, to, I mean, to talk about I mean, you know, handing somebody the wheel of your car, right? Giving them your keys. For, yeah. you know, first of all, they're they're underage, and they've almost killed you before, apparently. Uh, you know, or at least had an accident before, and yet he hands her the keys again a second time. And there's this, there, mm. yeah. So, and yet there's there's another level of trust or mistrust societally. So we see that from the outside yeah. and immediately we say, oh, it has to be an unhealthy relationship. There must be, there are boundaries being crossed. There are lines being crossed there. Exactly. It, you're very right. Like I, I set up from the beginning that Julie and Julie and Paul, even if she's younger, she has the upper hand. She's the strong one. She is the strong of them one. Too. Yeah. Because Paul is in as much need of a friendship as Julius of him, because he he doesn't have that much. He lives by himself. He's very reclusive. So for him, Julie has always been his pal. It's never been anything sexual in my intentions, and then it's up to everyone to read into it. But for my intentions, they just purely being friends. And so the trust was enormous in that because. He has to entrust her that, for example, the car, or he follows her wherever she goes, in a sense. And she has to trust him that she feels comfortable in his surroundings. So trust is a major, major topic of the film until, until you could say, society norms creeps in. Well, and, and in a sense, is is it her cousin, uh, Ida? Is that her name, her cousin? Yeah, yeah, that's who, a cousin, yeah. Yeah, so who clearly, I mean, talk about a, a line of trust being broken between the two of them, you know, first of mm. all, assuming, uh, immediately assuming sexual, uh, and then mm. and then becoming a competitive, a, a competition for her. You know, she turns this whole thing into a competition, a sexual competition. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, to me, that's a real, you know, that, I don't know, I, I felt, uh, I felt there was a, there was a tragic moment there for me, you know, that there yeah, was this was just loss innocence of innocence, loss. loss of innocence all the mm-hmm. way around, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think you're very right. I think I created just that because this the scene underneath the spaceship had just happened where Julie had accidentally, or yeah, crossed the line with Paul. She's gone too far in the drawing of his, on his leg. And he has reacted upon this, and she doesn't really know how to, what, or she doesn't really know what just happened in a way. Right, right. She doesn't understand what she has done wrong. So when the cousin comes in, she's just exaggerating the situation even more and uh, tearing them apart even more because she's suddenly asking, Do you "Have any? Have you ever done anything with him sexually? Have you ever?" She's pushing him to a new light that she's that Julie had never seen him in before. And she doesn't really understand what's going on or what's happening. The only thing she knows is that she she wants the attention back from a best friend. She wants to be like you always were, but it's, it's hard. It's it's like they have crossed that boundary and how do you go back? And unfortunately, they don't go back. It just goes downhill yeah. in a way. Uh, Carolyn, is this a film on some level? Is this story about... Um um, fr- I mean, it's obviously it's about friendship, without a doubt. That's an understatement. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. but is this about really about loneliness on some level? I mean, you know, or or is it a story about our own brokenness? Because I think loneliness doesn't have a judgmental edge mm-hmm. to it. But if I say these two characters are broken, therefore they've been brought together, yeah. I'm kind of casting judgment. I think. Um, in a, in a way, they are 
brokenness is maybe not the right word, but loneliness, I would say more so. Um, Paul is uh, like, it doesn't say in the film, but Paul, for me as a character, I've subplotted this film for quite some time and to be able to tell it, I have to, even if it's only a 15 minute film, I have to create the character's background sure, story. So for course. me, Paul, Paul is a man who um, has his entire growing up life or his teenage years taking care of his very ill mom. Mm. And it doesn't, it doesn't mention that at all in the film. But for me, he's always been taking care of his mom. And because of that, has has lost out on those rebellion years. Oh, and, okay, yeah. Um, and Julie is uh, a kid who who doesn't get the attention that she seeks in her home because she's not the main focus anymore. And she has been, she's just trying to be seen and be heard. Right. And Paul is the one that hears her and takes takes what she says like takes what she says into consideration more than anyone else in her surroundings well there's a there's so a together yeah. they join I was I was just I was talking to a, a, a woman, a short film uh, maker as well, a seven minute film, and it's a beautiful little art piece, mm. and it's called uh, Exit Entrance, and she, mm. it, basically it's a film uh, with a poetry that's been narr- a poem that's been narrated over it, and it's a delightful film. You really need to see it if you can, but mm. she she makes the point at at one at, at one point in the film about this, you know, we are all, we're all just trying to be feel at home. You know, we all just want to belong mm, on some exactly. level, you know, and I got to say, and I said it in the, the the interview that I just did a few hours ago, that that there really is a theme. I mean, and maybe there's a theme of mm. all film, maybe of all storytelling. Yeah. Maybe that's what yeah. we're all just trying to do in some in some remote kind of way. But but mm. and I think that's what why I asked the question about the brokenness for the versus the loneliness. Mm, I, I think I think you're on to something because it's like obviously the backstory of there. I would say Paul is more broken than Julie mm, okay. uh, um, in that regard. But they both have that loneliness. But together they they come together and they are like they are union. They're best friends. They are under like they both get what they need out of each other. But not platonic. Like there's no sexual intention with that. But it was very important for me to not to make a Lolita and not to make a fish tank. I wanted, like, even if both of the films had been major inspiration, I wanted to do something completely different that we haven't seen prior, where and that this innocence can exist, but it, it, it gets torn apart because of what people think of them and not because it, they did anything wrong per se. Right, right. It's all about, and again, we're back. We're kind of back to trust in a way, aren't mm. we? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you remember? No, I was very. I, sorry. I uh, the, do you remember the film, The Professional, uh, um, um, with uh, Natalie Portman, uh, Gary Gary Oldman? Wow. And I, I haven't seen it in years, uh, so it was. Uh, it's got to be na- nineteen ninety. I don't know, two something like that. Oh, yeah, I, yes, 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 yes. When she's uh, a little kid, when she's that, a little child, yeah? Correct, yeah. She's like supposed to be yeah. about 12 years old. He's a hitman. I remember being a great film and really enjoying it. Yeah. And, but I remember uh, a relationship between the two of them that kind of reminded me of this of this film, of your film. Yeah. Um, because Thank there was... Thank you so much. But that was also a major inspiration. I, I can never remember the title of the film. But yes, it was also a major inspiration of how they portrayed as best friends and there was no sexual tension whatsoever. Exactly. There 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 mm. wasn't and mm. yet I I as a viewer kind of um, mm. almost layered that on, if if you know what I mean. There yeah, was, exactly. It, it wasn't in the story, it wasn't in the film, but because I don't even maybe trust no. me, may, you know what? Maybe this is the, the the reason here is that I don't trust myself. You know, maybe that's what you really as a filmmaker are trying to get me to you know, you, you want me to ask that question, right? Yeah, it's it's that's what's been the fascinating thing. It's like, especially if you're a guy watching this film, what I've realized is why they mark often him as a character, as a pedophile, is because men don't trust themselves. They know much more than we know as females. So I think that's why guys are very quicker to judge, jump to judgment because they know themselves and they know men. 
Yes. Maybe yeah. I'm casting judgment a little bit on men now, but <laughs> it's more. You can, you can go ahead and do that. So, I'm okay with that. But I think it's just like, because other men are aware of yeah, sexual urges and what men might do. We don't, women don't have the same drive in that same sense. At the same time, it was super important for me that they were friends. But I think that's why the film ended the way it did because I wanted you to see. I wanted the audience to see their own prejudice whilst yes. they, because you look throughout the film and as you say, you judge them or you judge him and you judge their relationship. And then once you get to the end, you realize that judgment that you just have casted upon them is actually what tears them apart. Yes. It's it in my way. It's kind of like provoking that the audience see from with see themselves from within and see, shit, I just did that. Anyway. Well, and there's and there, and, and 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 Carolyn, isn't there a deep? Forget about all social uh, uh, convention mm. here, but isn't there a deep tragedy in that? That that um, you know the two of them, their relationship is broken up by what people think by what other people mm. think, by a perception that they clearly on some level is misguided. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's extremely tragic. It's extremely tragic. And, and this is the thing. I think I made this film because I wanted to say I'm sorry. Because mm. this film is, in a sense, based upon my own friendship um, and who I left because I started listening to what other people thought of him. So for me, this film came out of uh, some sort of way of saying, I'm sorry. Right. So a very personal sort of, uh, uh, almost a love letter in a sense. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely say it's fair to say. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, think... Without a doubt. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, you know, and it's interesting. I mean, I think any kind of great art has to come out of... Um, a passion or a love or a commitment for for something else or for something other it seems mm-hmm. to me right it's mm-hmm. it's not it's not a single line there's a you know i love i mean in in sense you know just to, to take from your film there's this you know i love the mm-hmm. fact that the the pen on the leg is connecting freckles is connecting birthmarks i didn't go there i didn't know that i mean maybe i just yeah. <laughs> i missed out as maybe i missed out as a kid uh, but but um you know if i was writing on somebody's leg i would just be drawing on their leg you know i'd be <laughs> <laughs> scribbling yeah. on their leg but <laughs> but what's cool about the birthmarks and the freckles is there's actually there's kind of an intention to that right and 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 there's mm. a there's a design behind it if if that makes any kind of sense in in, in, yeah, so, exactly. in some way you know and yet it's very free-flowing it's 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 mm. Carol, carolyn it's open structured you know yes it's very true um like now, throughout this interview, I've been very open with how I felt about making the film or what I had intentions, or what my intentions were. But at the same time, and if you see the film and you haven't heard me speak, um, it's I, I try, what I hope that I come across with is that I try to leave a very open film mm. where each person can apply what they thought is correct and incorrect. Because... Um, I'm foremost, I started out in documentary, observational documentary filmmaking, oh, okay. mm-hmm. and then gone into drama. So I think I applied that knowledge. And rather than pointing my finger and saying, this is the reasoning behind, I'm more so portraying a situation. Yeah, it's almost like the, the lens looking in on the situation and, and you're hoping people... Um, you know, come away with their own understanding, their own interpretation, or maybe, maybe better yet, their mm. own their own uh, series of questions. Yeah, exactly. And the main goal for this film was like you might hate it, you might love it. Uh, it's up to each individual to decide. But I just wanted to create discussion. Yeah. Um, so, if you don't mind, just re- technically, why why fifteen minutes? I mean, was that very intentional on your part? Was it a budget thing? How you know why? How how do you land on a short film? It was more so because I've done so much documentary, and 
I had this script within me and I just knew I wanted to do it. And I knew they wouldn't put money on me to make my first feature drama if I hadn't proven myself prior. Right. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so for me, it was... And I throughout the process, everyone went to me, Caroline, Jesus, this is a feature film. Why are you making it as a short? Mm. And but at the same time, I felt like I, ha- I needed to make it. There are potentially plans to make it a feature film as well. But I needed to make it just to, to get it out of my system. Right. In a sense. Right. Because right. it was the first fictional script that I've ever written in my entire life and it was the closest to my heart so I just I just needed to get it get it out and we were lucky enough to receive the Ingmar Bergman award for best uh, manuscript wow. and that made and and also the pixel talent award and those two awards made it possible for us to finance the short yeah, that's fan- no, which that's, is really good yeah the, no that's fantastic well I mean I would say you've um, if if you were setting out to prove yourself as a narrative filmmaker, you've you've certainly done that. <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you very much. Well, I, I think really it, appreciate that. Well, I, th- I think it's really cool that you know you've got. I didn't know that you were doing uh, observational doc- documentary filmmaking uh, before and have had done a lot of it because in a way you really are. Uh, uh, you know, the camera is kind of the all-seeing eye here in this in this relationship. And and yeah. you're not you're not casting any real uh, judgment at all. Or at least I certainly don't feel that. And um, be, how 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 was it received at TIFF? I mean, what were what were you, what were the Q and A's like? The Q and A's were really good. It was really good. And um, I think I didn't get that many questions due to being so many Canadian films, which is completely understandable. There was a lot of family and friends in the audience, and there were some fantastic Canadian films. Uh, but in general, I got a great feedback. I've been getting, a, yeah, I've, I've been really in, impressed in a sense. Because so with prior me leaving, I was like, oh, people might not see what I'm trying to say. Like I was always mm. aware of that it's kind of a complex film, and 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 it's up to everyone to take their own judgment. So I thought, okay, this this is, can go fifty to fifty. But what I've noticed is that a lot of people see what I see. And um, throughout that, like, we've been getting great reviews in and the audience were lovely and they came up and were extremely supportive. And But it's always interesting if, like, for example, if you have a family, you might watch this film with pure judgment. If you don't have family, you have... It's very. It's just very interesting how people can read into it depending on their own life situations. So. Well, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. I have I've had a few friends who have um you know had had some issues uh with with the mm. law, the law. How's that? <laughs> let's go. Let's go as far as saying that. And I've had I've gotten into some pretty deep conversations with people about about um you know uh, what it means to cross lines sexually, and so I've mm. had people say things to me like, "Oh well, it, f- all fine and good for you as long as it's not your daughter." And mm-hmm. and what's really interesting to me about your film is that it's 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 a beautiful film and it's a relational film and it's 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 uh, uh, poetic. I mean, it really is lovely to watch. It's lush and beautiful, but it's also like you said. I think complex is almost an understatement in a sense because if you if you spend mm. a few minutes thinking about it uh, as you leave the theater, or better yet, over a coffee or a, or a bottle of wine later, there there is a lot going on here. There is way more going on here than meets the eye. Yeah. This. <laughs> Yeah, that's very, very true. And I, I I think that was my intention, is was to create discussion, because there's, there's, we as a society, like, because it was very, very interesting making the film for myself. It was like, like when I'd been pitching it here in Sweden and trying to get financing, it's been, everyone has, I've been judged straight away, this is a pedophile film. Mm. And I can completely see why people see it that way. But at the same time, this kind of narrative, this kind of um, this side of the story has never been told before, and someone has to do it because otherwise, how do we create discussion? Yes, yes. So, because otherwise, we will just have one single-minded filmmaking, and we wouldn't be questioning ourselves. 
Well, this is, and isn't this kind of in a way the job, the task, the 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 drive of the artist, and that is to, you yeah. know, like play, yeah. like Socrates said, you know, he was the gadfly. He 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 got in the oint, the fly in the ointment that upset everything, and and you've got exactly. to, you know, exactly. these these artful thought experiments that you put out there that you hope are going to take the conversation to a to a deeper level about a variety of things. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. Well, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, I really enjoyed your film. I I, I think it's worthy of much more discussion than we've given it, frankly, and. Um, <laughs> Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. Listen, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and I'll be honest with you and with all of my listeners that this is the first year I've really dug into the shortcuts side of things. Yes, and, and oh, I've, that's so interesting. Well, I've been marvelously uh, uh, surprised. Not Sorry, wrong. That's just not fair. Um, <laughs> the, the, so many wonderful surprises, really. Just really delightful uh, little films out there. Uh, I've seen a seven-minute film, and I've seen a two-and-a-half-hour film at the festival this year, and it's just, it's really great to be able to massage one's soul, mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I, I see what you completely mean. It's, yeah. And the thing is, making shorts, because like we, I think we're all shortcuts, yes, strive to make good. the longer version, but we, yeah. but at the same time, as an art form to be able to tell a story in, only a few minutes. Oh, absolutely! It's not easy to do, mm. and yeah. Well, listen, you've you've uh, congratulations. You 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 did it very well, and I hope I hope Thank lots you. I hope lots of people get to see your film, and maybe we can do a part two to the uh, the interview down the road. But once again, th- thanks for joining us, Carolyn Ingerson, and um, her f- her n- uh, new film world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival called Beneath the Spaceship. Thanks for joining us today, Carolyn. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, and I hope I'll be back next year.